We are on a 14 game unbeaten streak today, but we have to face St. Pauli away, the team sitting in third place. They are one place behind us in the league. If they beat us, we fall out of the automatic promotion spots. Let's get into today's episode and see how we get on up against them today. Welcome back then guys to the Red Devil Revival here with Kaiserslautern now for episode 25 of our series. I can't quite believe we're already 25 episodes in but here we are and as I've just said in the intro we are on fantastic, fantastic form. 14 games now unbeaten in all competitions and we are still sitting inside those promotion spots. Now though before we get into today's episode properly guys... If you did miss the previous one, there'll be a link right above me for you to go back and see quite what went on when we faced first placed Darmstadt in a top of the table clash. And of course, we witnessed one hell of a bottle job. I say, use the link above me if you want to go back and watch quite what went on. And of course, before we do get going in properly in today's video, if you do enjoy today's episode, guys, please do go and chuck a like down onto it. As I always say, every like on the channel matter does help the channel itself out. And of course, if you're looking forward to seeing any more of my content, such as my FM21 tactics videos, the latest which should have gone live earlier on in the week, guys, then do make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. Now then, though, let's get into this episode here today. We've only played two matches since last time out, and we've got a win and a draw. Of course, in the previous episode, we had two draws. Disappointing, all things considered, mainly because of the fact we completely bottled the Darmstadt game, and then we had a completely drab fixture up against Dusseldorf. We then, though, played Erdingen, who were, I want to say, 16th or 17th in the league, away from home, and we smashed them. 3-0, a brace from Militieri and a goal from Pellegri. We then, though, took on the relegated side in Hamburg, who got relegated from the Bundesliga last season. And it was a very even game. We didn't really create anything, neither did they. It finished 0-0. It was a fair result, all things considered. And as a result of that, we are sitting in second place. We are six points behind Darmstadt after those drop points in the previous episode. Not annoyed about that whatsoever. And of course, we are first of all today taking on St. Pauli. We then have to face Brunschweig, who are really, really struggling. They got promoted last year from the Dry Liga, and hopefully that should be an easy win. But we'll have to wait and see. But St. Pauli is most definitely the main focus of our attention today. We lose that, they leapfrog us, and they get into the automatic promotion spot. In terms, though, of how we're lining up for this game, first of all, it's a pretty strong squad, all things considered. Krapikas in net, Hubner, Ramos, and Nielsen starting at the back. Nielsen's finally back fit today. Butson at right back, Hertra at left back. It's then Barrero in as the defensive midfielder. Salas and Maria are starting the centre of midfield. Salas, for some reason, gets lots and lots of yellow cards despite being an advanced playmaker. I don't quite understand it. He's on course for now, I think, 10 yellow cards. We've only played 13 times in the league. I don't quite understand quite what he's up to. It's then Plegri and Militieri, though, starting up front. I am really liking how the tactic is getting on, despite the fact there are a few draws creeping in. We're still playing really well. To be unbeaten in 14 games says a lot, really, about how well the tactic itself is working. But let's get into this game here, and let's see how we do. It's a massive fixture in the context of the league and the promotion race. We win it, we go four points clear, or five points clear, actually, no, even, of St. Pauli. It's a big, big game. i be honest, I think it will finish as a draw. I will be surprised if we can beat them, but if we can do that, we'll be bloody fantastic. St. Pauli's lineup is a 4 3 3 with three strikers. Interesting one there. Of course, they have Tim Reader, our former player, on their bench. So, be interesting if he gets any games. Our recent form, of course, I'm saying we are 14 unbeaten. We have only won two in our last five, which doesn't make it sound quite as good. But considering some of the teams we played, we played Dusseldorf, Hamburg and Darmstadt, which were the games which finished as draws. So, you know, we're beating the teams which should lower down the league. We're, we're drawing with the teams in and around our position. You think of that, those types of results. That is promotion contention. That is promotion form, realistically. You know, it's not bad at the end of the day. Militieri, an early chance there. I wasn't really even paying much attention. I thought that Salas pass was never reaching anyone. And Militieri nearly snuck it in at the near post. Not quite sure how he managed it. Of course, guys, in case you weren't aware, I have actually released this tactic, the 5 3 2 defensive midfielder, on the channel. And, oh, Pellegrini. Oh, he should have scored that. I thought he had done. 
Oh, dear me. But as I was saying, this tattoo is now available for you to download. If you want to use it, you can, there is a link in the description for the Steam Workshop page, and that will probably be in every foreseeable episode that as long as we are using this tactic. And there is also the new video on the channel as well, explaining about how it quite works. We were lucky that we didn't just concede, can I just point out, because the Sampani player, Divkovic, I think it was, should have scored he was one on one and he completely balls that up. But oh well, not the end of the world. One thing I will also mention, okay, we nearly conceded. Okay there, lads, just just you know, settle down, lads, settle down. Flipping, I can say demand more from them. I was gonna say though that we have had our next round draw in the cup has been decided, and we've got Belushia, Minchin, Gladbach, or Mock and Gladbach, however you pronounce it, at home. So yeah. I'll be honest, I'm not particularly confident about getting any further. I think it's the third round. I don't think it's the court final, I think it's the last sixteen. And that'll probably be what next episode is. But uh, yeah, it's going to be quite painful that I don't think it's until January. But yeah, it's going to be uh, a tough old game, that one, I reckon. Hang on, what's happening here? Himmelman, is he getting there? He Okay, he is. He just took his time to pick the ball up. I wonder if the keeper was going to balls it up. We recently had in the stream with Norwich City, we had a bit of a cock up by one of the goalkeepers where he just left the ball in the Europa League. I've got no idea why. Salas here, though, to Butson. Come on, Niels, you're going to get in the box. Come on, what's he going to do with it? He has gone to Salas. Come on, put it across. He has done more here. To Butson. Come on, we've broken the deadlock. Fantastic goal. Niels Butson scores on his weaker left. I don't quite know why he was so far forward and in the centre of the box, but I do not care. A goal is a goal, no matter who scores it. Chuffed with that. And okay, there's a highlight straight away. Oh no. Please don't get an instant reply, St. Pauli. Please. Oh no. Oh no. Well, this this is going to be fun. Is it? Oh, I thought Butson was going to nick that then. Okay, it's not been nicked. Okay, Benatelli, Dashner. Okay, over to Olsen, the right back for St. Pauli. He puts it in way too much space for Dia. How he does not score, then I do not know. He had a free header. And that was really bad defending from us and a bad effort from their player. We were very lucky then that St. Pauli did not capitalise on our horrendous defending. I don't know where on earth Butson was. He should be marking that. And why did Maria just run it off the pitch? Oh, Palaio, what are you playing at, son? Even so, we've managed to somehow get in at half-time at 1-0 up. I don't think we deserve to be, to be completely honest. But I'm going to say don't get complacent. And I'm looking at the team... And I'm going to sub off Barrero for Erhardt. He's not having a great game. We're going to make that swap. Only changes the personnel. Nothing tactical is being swapped with that decision there. But hopefully it doesn't impact the game too negatively. They're arguably as good as each other. I'd say Barrero's a bit better going forward. But Erhardt's better defensively. So really it probably helps us out more. Because that we are now leading. Maria here with a really weird ball. But Hercher has done well to control it. Come on Philip. What's he going to do? He plays it to Militieri. I don't think he's onside. It's been saved anyway. Oh, my days. He was actually onside. He's just wasted that. Oh, Samuel. I can't believe he hasn't just scored that. I presumed he was offside, so I wasn't really thinking much of it. Oh, you absolute idiot. Oh, now there's a highlight straight after that as well. How much we want to bet it's going to be a St. Pauli goal. You just know. You just know after missing a chance like that, he's going to come back and completely bite us. But hang on, Maria here. Are we going to get a chance to counter -attack? Playing Pellegri. Oh, we should have played him earlier. Well, we got lucky. It's fallen to Militieri. He's got a score this time. He does, and he's actually counting. We are 2 0 up. And that's his ninth of the season. I thought after Maria took too long to pass it to Pellegri then. I thought that was us going to get counted ourselves. But thankfully, the ball ricochets off Pellegri and falls perfectly to Militieri. I mean, Pellegri obviously meant that. It was, it was entirely calculated from Pietro to play that through inch perfectly to Militieri. Lovely finish as well from him. Because, in fact, he literally just balls up that previous chance. I didn't think he was going to score then. Oh, my days. I thought that was going to loop over Crappy Cass. Oh, goodness me. I'm way too nervous for this game. We were only in game number 14 of the season. There's still 20 to play. Why am I getting so nervous about this game? <laughs> Deary me, Bookman here to Dashner, back to Bookman, who I think is a centre-back or defensive midfielder. I don't know why he's quite so far up the pitch, but here he is. Lawrence now, I don't know who this Lawrence player is. He sounds English with a name like Lawrence, but OK. Over to Lawrence again here, who plays it to Noel, who I guess he must be the new right-back. He must have made a substitution to Pally. I wasn't really paying attention. Hercher, can okay, we have the ball back? Can we get another chance to counter-attack? This is where we thrive, is when we are counter-attacking and teams are attacking us and leaving those gaps in behind. Maria on the counter. Come on, what's he going to do with it? There's a lot of... Oh, he's played it, actually. Militieri, Pellegri. 
3-0. Surely, and I'm going to be risky here, surely we can't bottle this like last episode. That was 2-0. It's now 3-0. Surely we can't be that crap. If we do, I am going to be throwing water bottles at the players for days. Now, if I'm going to make a change. I'm actually going to change one of the strikers. We're going to get Uffon for Militieri. I know he's got a goal and assist, but I want to give him a rest here for the upcoming fixture with Brunschweig. I'm pretty happy. I think at 3 0 with 15 minutes play, we should be okay. If Oh, God. Why have I just said that? I don't know. Final change. I'm going to get Montello de Oliveira on for Salas, I think. And yeah, we are going to do that. I'm going to say there's no pressure on him. He looks pleased, apparently. Come on, we got 10 minutes. We win this. It's a massive, massive result in the context of the league. I think we're surely going to do it. It's into stoppage time now. And it looks like it's going to be a really comfortable lead. And for once, we are getting a comfortable win on camera against a big team. Fantastic. Defensive, can I just say, look at those ratings. Every defender was a 7 or above. Even Crappy Cast with 7.2. Because in some of the chances we gave up, I'm surprised. But to be fair, St. Pan only had one shot on target. So does suggest we did defend very, very well. I'm going to say, well done, lads. They look really happy about that, which is very, very good. And it secures us very much firmly in second place. We are three clear of Nuremberg, and we are now five clear of St. Pauli. And we go three behind Darmstadt. They do have a game in hand, so that may well change by the time we get to our next game. But we now have to go and play Brunschweig at home, very much a league struggler. So we will get to that game, and I'll see you there very shortly, guys, in a few seconds. Here we are then now for our second game of today's episode and it's arguably the easier of the two matches. We are playing Brunschweig who have actually now dropped down into 18th place because other teams around them have played. And as a result, I'm playing a slightly weakened side. I just feel it would be nice to give some of the other players some minutes on the pitch and so on and see how they get on. We're starting, of course, with Krapikas in net because, of course, we are. It's then Cecharini coming in as a right central defender with Ramos and Nilsson. Butson starts at right back. Montero de Oliveira is in as the defence midfielder. Hurt is still at left back. Salas and Ritter are starting midfield with Pellegri and then Mark Uff starting up front. I've dropped Militieri to the bench in place of Uff for this game. That's how we're lining up. Let's get straight into it and let's see quite how we do in this game. I am overall expecting us to absolutely batter the crap out of Brunschweig. And if we know I've said it though, we won't do that. I have a feeling Enzo Zidane may play for this team. I'm not entirely sure. Let's have a quick little look. I'm not sure what formation that Brunschweig do play. Let's have a look and see. As I say, they're on awful form. They are rock bottom of the league currently. And yes, they do actually have Enzo Zidane. So our former player is starting for them in this game. Certainly dropped down the table now, has old Enzo. I wonder what they're paying him because he wanted seven grand a week to stay with us. And because in fact, Maria is being paid, I think, two grand to just play for us. I'm not going to give him that type of money. So he's absolutely ridiculous. He wants that type of money. And so far, what a dull game. Awful stuff from us. Enzo Zidane, after I'm ripping into him, has a free kick, which he's put in. And now it's going to be a pen. Oh, great. And if it's Hercher that has pushed him, Hercher's booked. Please do not say it was Hercher that fouled him. Oh, no, we could be going down to 10 men and giving the penalty away. OK, it has been awarded. Thankfully, there is no red card. Come on, crappy Cass, please. Oh, no, they're bottom of the league. Oh, crappy Cass actually went the right way. I thought he may have saved it then, but he has been put in the back of the net. Martin Kobielanski, I presume he's Polish or has Polish nationality with a name like that. And oh, great. We are 22 minutes in and we won it down. But it was a highlight straight away. Can we score and get an instant reply from it? Salas now over to Butson. Come on, Niels. Are you one of the better players in this squad? There is still interest in him. So in the January window, he could well be leaving the squad. At one point in the summer, we had a bit of 1.1 million for him. And I said no initially. Pellegri here. Come on, Pietro. He puts it across to Uff. How has he not scored? I know he's a left footer, but even so, you're like two yards out. You should be scoring that. Oh, no. Ritter's corner. Of course, we've got Ritter on the pitch, so it's actually going to be having some good set pieces from him. And now there's a corner now being put in by Enzo Zidane. Okay, it's been it's a terrible corner. Absolutely awful. But Zidane, we have no opportunity now to put it in. He plays it over the Kaufman, who hits it, and it's now 2-0. OK, his first goal of the season as well. So, so far, Brunschweig have scored two goals against us. Both their players, their only goals of the season after 15 games. Fantastic. You've got to love football manager, don't you? You go and smash one of the best teams in the league, 3-0 away from home. You then take on one of the weakest sides in the division, newly promoted, bottom of the league. And we are nearly 3-0 down in it. OK, right, I'm just making a change. We're not pissing about anymore. 
Okay, Uff off for Militieri. And Hurch is booked and not playing great. We're going to get Debock on in his place. Double change. We're not changing things tactically, just personnel. Ritter with a free kick. Can we please score a goal before half time? Okay, looks like we're going to be getting a cheap penalty after Pellegrini is pushed over into the box. Please say it is not Ritter taking it. If I get the chance, I'm going to be changing it because Ritter is terrible at pens. Oh no, I can't change it. I don't know who's taking it. I get off the screen. Who is taking it? Okay, Militieri, please, Samuel. Please, okay. Okay, Militieri, he has got decent pens, thankfully, unlike Ritter, who has missed, I think, four of his last five pens for us. Militieri steps up and puts it into the back of the net. This game was supposed to be nice and easy, a calm game after the 3 0 up against St. Paul. It has been anything but that. Anything but it. But we have a free kick here. Ritter, we know how dangerous he is from him. Just before half time, Ritter to make it 2 all. He bloody does. Oh, Marlon Ritter. He struggled for game time this year, but that's his third of the season. Come on, Marlon. Get in there, son. Lovely free kick. Was it the keeper's fault? No, it was just a fantastic free kick. We know he can take him. He's got fantastic set pieces, both corners and free kicks. What a turnaround. 2-0 down. And thankfully, it's 2-all as we go into half-time. Realistically, though, we could have been 3-0 down at one point. So, you know, we were a bit lucky. But even so, even so, I'm still going to get angry at him and say it's not good enough. Because it just isn't. It's not good enough whatsoever. Apparently, Cetrini is nervous. How is a 30-year-old Italian centre-back who played for teams like Fiorentina now at Kaiserslautern are nervous in a game up against bottom of the league I've got no idea he's played in Syria for goodness sake he's like oh I'm a bit worried now I presume there must have been an injury and the box just didn't do an absolutely crap throwing then otherwise that was FM at its worst with the throwing today the <laughs> box good tackle loves it up oh, Militieri come on let's count let's go let's go Militieri come on son hit it he's gone for it that is dreadful Oh, Samuel, that was so bad. The highlights carrying on, though. Is this actually a proper... No, 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 no. Not Enzo Zidane, please. Anyone but Enzo. I was absolutely tearing him a new one at the beginning of this game. He is not allowed to score. Okay, he just isn't. It... Oh, oh no. Ritter, great challenge. De Oliveira, up to Militieri, can't play it. Oh, he's taking way too long. Pellegri, though. It's, it's a very long highlight. It's a very long highlight. De Bock here... He puts it in. Pellegri, who just about puts it wide. It wasn't a great head, all things considered. But even so, not bad. At least we're looking like we're still trying at the moment. I'm going to do Demar Moore. Oh, dearie me. Apparently, I should be subbing off Salas and Melamed. I mean, he is having a pretty horrendous game, isn't he, old Salas? Right, we're going to go attacking. And I'm actually going to get Maria onto the pitch instead of Salas. We'll go like so. Oh, guys, please, can we do something in this second half? We had a fantastic end to the first one, and we've done very little since. We've had an XG of two. Oh, no. Okay, right. Next next thing to do, we're going to make the wing-backs go more attacking. Okay, we're going to put Maria onto an attack, advanced playmaker onto attack role as well. I'm actually going to swap Maria and Ritter over. I think that's probably a better idea. And let's just see what we can do. Oh, can we please not drop points? They're bottom of the bloody league. Guys, anything at all. No, we are not going to see anything at Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I, this team does my nutting. We stick three past one of the toughest sides in the league. And then we scrape to a two-all draw against Brunschweig at home. That was not good enough. There's no excuses for that. They all look motivated. But why couldn't you be motivated in the bloody game to win it? <sighs> Great stuff. Great stuff there. All the hard work done in the first game. Supposed to be an easy one in the second. Nope. Anything but that. In the league, it means we stay in second place. We are now only a point above Dusseldorf. We'd, if we'd won that, we would have been, what, four behind Darmstadt? But no. No. We couldn't manage that whatsoever. But even so, into the schedule we go. We, of course, are coming back for the cup third round. The last 16, I think it is. Oh, it's not Mönchengladbach. I thought it was Mönchengladbach. Oh, I must have got mixed up. Wolfsburg is who we're playing. Great one there, Luke. Great one. That's really good, isn't it? It shows how good your memory is. Flipping. I mean, I know I haven't played the save for about two days in real life. But even so, it's Wolfsburg at home. So... Still, it's going to be a tough old game. We're going to come back for that one next episode. It'll probably be the only game that we do play because there may be some transfers taking place. I've already agreed, I think, two for the beginning of January. So we'll only play Wolfsburg. It'll be just a cup 
single match and will run for any transfers in and out of the club and of course the other games which have taken place. We also have the Qatar World Cup going on so that's why there's a big gap in terms of fixtures. But we'll be, that's what we'll be coming back for on Monday's episode. Overall though guys that just about wraps up this video here today and it's a complete mix of emotions. A fantastic and I mean fantastic performance of Kinson Pauli. 3 nil away from home. Phenomenal result. And then a complete and utter balls up up against Brunschweig there. And we were lucky to even come away with a point. Honestly, utter, utter crap from us in that second game. I'm really chuffed with the first one. But the second one is not good, if I'm honest. Not good at all. But even so, we scored five goals in today's episode, which is good. But we've conceded two, which isn't ideal. But guys, I do hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please do go and chuck a like down onto it. As I always say, every like on the channel massively does help out the channel itself. And of course, if you look forward to seeing any more of my content, guys, and do make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. But guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time.